We are returning to the one and only Jeju today for our first ever Jeju Marathon. We have a great selection of songs we're going to check out. They are all going to be live performances. The songs we're doing are Life Support, Canada, Run Away, Kiss B, and Just Another Girl. It is possible that some of these songs will get blocked, so there's a link in the description to my Patreon where you can find the full extended reaction with every song. We're going to start with Life Support. This was a request by my patron Dragon of the West. Thank you so much. The context I've been given is that this was a performance in February 2016 when he was still serving in his military service. So this is a hologram concert. The way I understand that is that this is a live performance, but it wasn't in front of a live audience until it was shown to a live audience. That's my assumption. We'll learn more once we start watching, but let's get right into it and see what's going on here. Cool. I like the overall mood of this song. It's quite dark. There's something very intense going on in the lyrics and we, we are going to check those out. His voice sounds so clean, powerful, raw. You can tell he really means what he's saying, really getting to the heart of it. There was a vocal melody there in the pre-chorus that really caught my ear. <laughs> That part. I think that's my favorite part of the song so far. What a great melody. And there isn't even a word there that he's singing. It's just a really big, passionate vocalization. Other than that, my criticism for this song, and this is actually a criticism I've had for another song of his, strangely enough, Sixth the Magnitude Star, where the chorus is so wordy. There's so many words in the chorus that it's hard to find it catchy since all of the syllables are the same length. It's got that da 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 it's it's akin to rapping almost. And not that I have anything against rapping, of course, but in a melodic song, I tend to gravitate towards longer notes, like the notes that we got in that pre-chorus there. But as far as you know delivering the emotion of the song. Totally nailing it. I am a bit confused um, at the format of this. My understanding of it was that it was a recording of a one take live performance, but when I'm listening to the vocals, I think there might have been multiple takes. Let's see. Yeah, you can hear the cut there where the breath sounds a bit unnatural for it to be just one take. 
It sounds like two voices. So what I what I feel like is that this song was simply re-recorded um, to give the impression of it uh, being live so that fans could hear a different version of the song when they attended this concert. Obviously, he couldn't be there and he would sing it live if he could. But it's more of a sort of uh, alternate version of the song rather than a live recording. A little bit of smoke and mirrors, of course, but we can still appreciate the cleanliness of these vocal takes. And it's good that we have no reason to doubt his live singing ability anyway, <laughs> which makes it a lot easier to enjoy this. That was just a stunning vocal run and melody into that modulation. And by modulation, I'm referring to the slight key change there. It's subtle enough in this song, very tastefully done, but it's done on that vocal run. You can sort of feel that heavenly lift in that moment where we're entering a new space of the song. It's a more uh, light-hearted emotion, very hopeful, different to the more bleaker tones earlier on in the song. So it's a nice progression. Oi, oi, oi. So the final chorus delivered by him there was absolutely stunning. He was showing so many different colors to his voice all at once. It was such an interesting mix of falsetto, mixed voice, and grit, rasp, growls, seamlessly transitioning between all those colors. And it's interesting. I feel like the wordiness of the chorus works much better in that sort of delivery rather than a full chest voice or full voice delivery as shown previously in the song. I much prefer the delivery that he showed in that final minute or so. Really loved it. Fair enough. It is a studio recording. Let's not get it twisted. But as far as, you know, nailing the emotion for this song in this recording, completely killed it. Some of my favorite vocals from him I've ever heard, without a doubt. Alrighty, let's look at the lyrics. Along with the passing breeze and the memories piercing my head, I can't feel a thing, 
Things both living and dead are meaningless to me. I feel like a speck of dust in the universe. I cannot disappear into the ground. Neither can I evaporate into the sky. That's what I'm telling her. Why? You can see me. I'm right here in front of you, but you still ignore me. I just want to feel you one more time. I know it's because I'm shabby right now. I'm getting the sense that this is a song about unrequited love. He's been rejected and he's feeling pretty down about it. Either he wants to get with this person and they don't want him, or he used to be with this person and they don't want him anymore. It goes on. Why can't I see it? Thinking I'm right next to you, I'm frustrated. Just feebly breathing in this world that's me. The sky has turned its back on me. Seems sadder to me. The many feelings that shook me make my head hurt. I can't feel anything. Even as I exist, keep existing is something I can't say. I only tell her. Why am I getting angry at my past? I feel like a fool no matter what I do because of my forgotten pointless moments. That was the image of myself that I made back then. Only once more I want to feel you. I agree now I am shabby. I'm really sad. Really sad. Hmm. Just having a little bit of a moment of self-pity as we all have, as we are all want to do from time to time. Um, I don't think there's much else to read into this. It's just that typical feeling of feeling dejected like nothing is going your way. There's a theme of lack of self-esteem in here. Relatable, of course. Uh, more pessimistic lyrics than I expected, although I should have known because those were some pretty heart-wrenching vocals from him. Okay, we're moving on to the next song, which is Canada. This is a Japanese song, I've been told, and this was a request by an anonymous patron. Thank you so much. And I don't know when this performance is from, but we can try to suss it out and see if we can figure it out. I was just adjusting the volume because uh, the audio quality isn't great on this. There's some clipping, but let's just hear that again. This is an extremely pretty song. I absolutely love the intro. There were some very pretty twinkly flourishes on the piano. The string melody was really gorgeous too. And it's just a very warm, inviting sound overall. I'm very much into it, especially the instrumental. His voice sounds beautiful. I will say that none of the vocal melodies are standing out to me as being particularly catchy again, but I am enjoying the sound of his voice, but I'm looking for that hook, the vocal hook to really pull me in. I'm catching moments of prettiness in the vocal melody that I can enjoy. For example, Just that little moment. Da, da, da. I'm sorry, I can't sing very well now, but you know, that low part stood out to me because it kind of jumped out of the typical range that the song was sitting in and just sit really well with the instrumental. He also looks really cute. I like the 
jacket he's wearing. Obviously, this is a recent performance. This video was uploaded in 2020, so I suspect that that's around when this performance took place. Wow, um, absolutely amazing. I was, <laughs> even though I complained about a lack of a hook in this song, I found myself hooked regardless as the song went on and as it built and built and his vocals became more and more extra. He honestly blew me away in this performance. The instrumental is so rich. Lots of beautiful melodies and the strings and the piano, the guitar solo, the music is so beautifully detailed and arranged and then his vocals on top of it giving so much heart and passion to the song his voice is obviously in incredible shape really loved this one and i do stand by my comment where this song is not particularly catchy the style it's going for and i've thought about this a little bit i've noticed this with 
some like Japanese and Korean songwriting is that they don't really go for like a hook in the chorus, but more of a linear melody with not a whole lot of repetition, but just a nice melody that fits well with the chord progression. I'm more of a fan of more hooky, catchy stuff, but I suppose when you watch a live performance like this, the linearity of the melody and the vocals lends itself to that live setting very well because it's more like sweepy or like being swept off your feet and carried on a journey in that way so i understand that approach very much so and i really enjoyed this one really cool recommendation let's check out the lyrics for this as we join hands in front of the station i hear the usual bustling of people but feel an unfamiliar wind i had planned to see you off with a smile but i could only watch you with a strained expression in the season you started to become an adult i was trying to keep a sad song from overtaking me i knew there was something i wanted to tell you in the end as i searched for the words that could replace goodbye I had begun to think that it was my role to lead you by the hand, but now I understand. With us as we are, the days we've built up together will be the guide. This is a really beautiful story that's being told in these lyrics. It's quite clear to me that this song is about a parent seeing their child off to their future as an adult. Typically, I suppose, seeing their kid off to university or college or, you know, perhaps the military, what have you. Um, but it's about... Just the bittersweetness of that moment and realizing that it's never going to be the same. You know, sad, I'm sure, for lots of parents, but also there is that element of pride. Like it says here, using the days that you've built with your child as a guide for the relationship moving forward. Very cute. Absolutely love it. And the fact that the lyrics of this song are quite a literal story does lend itself to the linearity of the vocal melody too that I was talking about. The lyrics go on. As the time you spent becoming an adult piled up, I was beginning to change as well. But as long as this song remains, where we're headed, the two of us will always be connected. The sound of a bell comes out of nowhere. I panic, our hands let go, and you begin to walk away. I'll call out and wrap my arms around you. No matter where you go, I'll protect you with this voice. Ever since you appeared before me, everything started to look different. My mornings, light, tears, even a singing voice were given a radiance by you. I put my uncontrollable feelings into song and send them to the far off city you reside in. If that song still manages to sound the same, we can be connected no matter where we are. So lovely. What a gorgeous song. I'm curious to know the context of the creation of this song because as far as I know, Jejun doesn't have any kids. It's possible that this is part of a soundtrack or something like that, or maybe for a non-profit. Uh, very curious about that. Let me know if you know a bush. A very beautiful song and beautiful lyrics all the same. Let's move on to Runaway. Now, I know that this song is from earlier in his career, but this performance is actually quite recent, two years ago. This song I included at my own discretion after doing some research and seeing uh, what songs of his are popular out there. So let's get into it. Just 
This song, I'm not quite feeling as much as the first two. It sounds a lot more generic to me. Very much a sort of radio-friendly, almost Adele-style a ballad that was popular around this time that this song was released. I'm not hearing the sophistication in the songwriting uh, of the previous two songs here. It's very bare bones, you know, that we have simply piano chords and his voice. Not a whole lot to comment on. His vocal performance is really good as always. And what I will say, and what I do like, is that there is actually a hook to the chorus here. It's the da da da. That's a hook. It's it's a memorable, and I like that that there's a, that little hook there to give the song a little bit of identity. But um, otherwise, I associate this sound and this atmosphere with interestingly a more Western style of balladry that I don't find as appealing. So I could be imagining this, but I'm seeing the difference between some. Eastern styles of songwriting in Western here. You know, Western, I guess, can tend to be a bit more hooky, and then the Eastern is more is more linear. I don't know if I'm alone in that, but I hope you guys are sort of catching on to it as well a little bit. Like this song, I could easily imagine someone like Shawn Mendes or Justin Bieber or Taylor Swift singing this type of melody, but I could definitely not see those artists singing the last song, Canada. Hope I'm not alone in that. Anyway, let's keep it going. Hee <laughs> As I said to say it's over, I think you feel the same. When I look at your heart, you just run away. Make it no get as much. I'm gonna do when I say we just run away. Yeah, in my opinion, a surprisingly average to below average song from him. I was kind of hoping it would go somewhere uh, after the first chorus, but the second chorus was pretty much a carbon copy, except for some nice vocal runs from him that I did appreciate. Where was that nice vocal run that I heard from him? I like that little vocal run. It's cool. It's just an interesting tidbit in the song to give us some variety, which this song badly needed. Just a bit of a dreary, bland track. Not a song that gives him a whole lot to work with doesn't really challenge his range or anything like that, which is not a comment on his voice in his later years, because again, to my understanding, this is an older song of his uh, from 2016. So yeah, 2016 was a rough year for pop music. So the quality of this song, all of a sudden, it totally makes sense here. But you know, he's great to look at. He's a handsome guy, very charming setting, well shot. Decent production here, but not my favorite piece from his catalog at all. Now, let's look at the lyrics. I don't have high hopes for these either, I'll be honest. Although you were going, I called for you. It's the end of the road. Although it was farewell, although again you send it all away, because I cherished you, I could not send you away. Instead, above a high-level tidal wave, you ride. I will forget the growing hopeless love. I just have to say it's over. I think you feel the same. Why, when I intend to make you smile, you just run away. Don't say you tried. You don't hate anything. Why, when I have you love me, you just run away. Sounds like he's venting his frustrations about this partner he has who is not putting in the elbow grease and the legwork that he is uh, in the relationship. He doesn't feel like his efforts are being matched. 
And he's gotten to the end of his tether and he's just like, listen, see you later. I've had enough. I will begin. I'm tired too. I'll find a way afresh so I will get out. Did I cherish you? Why did I hold on? I regret it. Above a high level tidal wave. You ride. I will forget the growing hopeless love. I just have to say it's over. I think you feel the same. Why, when I have you love me, you just run away. Um, not a particularly interesting story. Serviceable for the music, but nothing that really stirs the heart like the last song did. Yeah, fairly predictable stuff. Okay, we're going to move on to the song Kiss B. This is a request by my patron, Laurely. Thank you, Laurely. The context that I've been given is that this is a live version in Japan, Yokohama, 2013. And this is a rearrangement, a more rock style, apparently, from the studio version, which I already reacted to and wasn't particularly fond of. So I am interested in seeing this live version uh, since I already reacted to the song in one of the B-side battles that we had on this channel. The studio version did, didn't do particularly well in one of those battles, but now we have the live performance from 2013 here to change my mind, hopefully. Let's see how this goes. We're going to move on to the final song, which is Just Another Girl. I actually think this is from the same concert, if not the same series of concerts. This was another one that I included at my own discretion. I saw that it was a popular song from the WWW album, primed for another taste from this record. Let's get right into it. <laughs> This song is a total banger. You know, uh, this song incorporates the infamous 6-4-1-5 chord progression that I often complain about because it's very commonly used. Many pop songs and rock songs, really songs of all genres, rely on this chord progression a lot to, I guess, cheaply elicit emotion. But this song just goes to show that it's not always about just the chord progression. It's about how you incorporate that chord progression amongst all the other elements. What this song really has going for it, in my opinion, is a really nice groove. The combination of a typically fairly bland chord progression with this groove automatically gives it so much life and makes the chord progression come alive and sound like something that you haven't really heard before. And it's also enhanced by the instrumentation, the very raw live drums and the haunting guitar licks. It's just a very beautiful sound that I feel totally enraptured by. And of course, the cherry on top is his vocals and the vocal melodies, which are very dynamic, go a lot of different places. They explore his range really well. He has a lot to work with in this song. So I am actually a huge fan of that chord progression when it's used well. And in this song, it's used absolutely perfectly. Let's continue to enjoy it.
Yeah, this could potentially be my favorite song of this marathon. Um, the rest of the song uh, continued very much in, this, in the same vein of the first half, but it progressed nicely because he varied the vocal melody to give us some nice high notes towards the end. Just so much passion in his performance. You could tell just from the way he was moving that he was one with the pounding instruments. You know, sometimes you watch a performance and it just doesn't need <laughs> explaining like you guys don't need me to explain this to you because you already get how sick this is <laughs> that's kind of how i feel about this performance a solid punch to the guts nothing too complicated or over complicated i should say just a banger i'm not surprised that this is a popular song from this album and now i'm just even more eager to get to the rest of the tracks on this record as i really feel like this era of his hones into my own personal taste quite scarily. Let's see what the song is about and check out the lyrics. Time after time, everything is my fault. And don't ask me why, since I can't see right now. You are now my luck. It could change, but I'm not like that. That was just your imagination. I can't take this no more. I will go crazy. I know you're not the one. I will leave after saying this. You're just another girl who just played with me. You're just another girl. Don't put me in pain. So clearly what this song is about is a girl who has hurt him somehow or some way. And he's basically trying to numb the pain by referring to her as just another girl. She is no longer a person. She's really just another girl. As expected, girls just hurt me. And you know what? I wasn't sure whether to bring this up or not, but I've sort of gotten wind of the fact that women uh, in South Korea are getting a bit of a raw deal in recent years. Feminism has become a bit of a hot topic, and I just like to call out hints of misogyny where I see them, and this chorus, you're just another girl who's played with me, like it's, it's pushing forward the idea that it doesn't matter which girl it is. Until you find the right girl, she's just another girl. I do find the subtext of lyrics like this interesting. Not to yuck anyone's yum who is a fan of this song. You know, if I were to be charitable, which I'm going to be, I would say that, you know, sometimes when you are hurt by someone that you love very much, part of that coping mechanism is diminishing the value of that person in your life and diminishing uh, their value to you. This is actually quite a relatable position, I would imagine, for a lot of guys who have been hurt by girls um, to say, oh, she's just another girl. You know, that's just part of the coping mechanism for being hurt. That is obviously a real thing that a lot of guys feel and vice versa. It's a natural thing to just want to really go low and take the low road and say nasty things about uh, this person who hurt you in order to alleviate the suffering that you're feeling. I'm just wary of this sentiment becoming a normality is all. Let's see how the rest of the song goes. Why again? Why say goodbye? Don't blame me and then leave. Because you're just another girl, just another girl, another broken heart for me. Yeah, again, associating girls in general with just kind of creatures that are bound to break your heart is a bit 
<laughs> a bit dodgy. It goes on. I will come back. I'm preparing to leave. Leave wearing your favorite clothes. I didn't say anything for this. The worst woman get lost in front of me. I will take out and throw away myself who has been in pain. I will live as a real man now so this won't happen again. Please go out. What lie are you going to say this time? Please just shut that mouth. I won't get tricked again. You are like this to any men. Don't tell them about me that I was just your playing mate. You're just another girl, another broken heart for me. Yeah, there is some clear women hate in these lyrics that I'm picking up on. And who am I as some a Western lad to criticize or comment? But of course, I have to be honest um, about how I feel about these. And the, the women hate in these lyrics is not something I'm on board with at all. The only way that I can sort of be generous about it is to acknowledge that when one is hurt, one is bound to mentally diminish the perpetrator in their mind in some fashion. Uh, that is kind of my preferred reading of these lyrics. I'll put it that way. Maybe a bit of a sour note to end the marathon on, but it's a banger of a song. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great song. And you know what? I will be enjoying this song uh, in my own time. You know, so sometimes there's aspects of songs that aren't your favorite, but you can sort of put it to the side and enjoy the music and the vocals. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on any of these tracks, these lyrics, and this marathon and my analysis as a whole. Again, you can find the full marathon on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Let me know any other specific songs from Jeju you'd like me to check out. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much and take care.